hello guys welcome to my tent so in this video we are going to discuss about the anatomy of scrotum all right let's get started so the scrotum is a large pendulous sac it's a large pendulous sac which is located below and behind the penis it is considered as an outpouching of the lower part of the anterior abdominal wall outpouching outpouching of the anterior abdominal wall and it contains testis epididymis and lower parts of the spermatic cord what does it contain testis it also contains the epididymis and the lower parts of the lower parts of the spermatic cord so coming to the external features external features what do we have in the external features the scrotum presents the following features let's look into it the scrotum is basically divided into the right and the left halves it is divided into the right and the left halves I'm drawing it now to show you this is the penis this is the glass penis and then we have a corrugator like this so this is the median half so the scrotum is divided into the right and the left house by fusion of the two halves of the scrotum this is known this is known as the median ridge or raphe median ridge or raphe so the scrotum is divided into the right and left halves by the median ridge or raphe and it indicates the line of fusion of the two halves of the scrotum the skin of the scrotum is rugous or it is also called as the corrugated corrugated skin it is mainly because of the presence of the subcutaneous dartos muscle you have the dartos muscle in the subcutaneous this will lead to the corrugated appearance of the scrotum and the left half of the scrotum hangs lower the left will hang the lower it is due to the, because the left spermatic cord is longer than the right spermatic cord so this is about the external features and introduction of the scrotum now we are going to look at the layers of the scrotum so coming to the layers of the scrotum layers of scrotum what are the layers of the scrotum the scrotal wall from the outside to inside is made up of five layers we are going to look at one by one. The outermost is the skin. Second thing we have is the dartos muscle. The third one is the external spermatic fascia. The fourth one is the cremasteric fascia. And the fifth covering is the internal spermatic fascia. So these are the coverings of the fascia. We will look at it one by one. So what do we have the outermost? The outermost is the skin. And below the skin, we have the dartos muscle. And below the dartos muscle, we have the external spermatic fascia. And then we have the cremasteric fascia. And below the cremasteric fascia, we have the internal spermatic fascia. And after all these five layers comes the testis. So these are the five layers of the uh, scrotum. Now let's discuss about the blood supply, nerve supply and the lymphatic drainage of the scrotum. So coming to blood supply of the scrotum. What do we have in the blood supply? The following arteries will supply the scrotum which are Nothing but as the first one is the superficial external pudendal artery. Superficial external pudendal artery, and then we have the deep external pudendal artery. The third one is the scrotal branches, scrotal branches of the internal pudendal artery internal pudendal artery and the fourth one is the cremasteric artery cremasteric 
artery which is the branch of inferior epigastric artery inferior epigastric artery so these are the main arteries that supply the scrotum the superficial external pudendal artery and the deep external pudendal artery and when we have the scrotal branches of the internal pudendal artery and finally the cremastric artery which is the branch of inferior epigastric artery coming to nerve supply of the scrotum nerve supply so the nerve supply of the scrotum is divided into two regions if this is the scrotum this is the line we have the anterior one third anterior one third and the posterior two third so the anterior one third is supplied by the l1 segment l1 segment and the posterior two third is supplied by the s3 segment so the anterior one third is supplied by the l1 segment which is nothing but as the first one the ilio inguinal nerve ilio inguinal nerve and then we have the genital branch of the genital branch of the genitofemoral nerve genitofemoral nerve so these are branches of the l1 segment right so they supply the anterior one third and the posterior two third of the stum, uh, scrotum is supplied by the posterior scrotal branches of the perineal nerve perineal nerve perineal nerve has its posterior scrotal branches and they supply the posterior two third and the involuntary dorsal muscle which li which is uh, which lines the inside of the scrotum is supplied by the sympathetic fibers the dorsal muscle dorsus is supplied by the sympathetic fibers from the genital branch of the genitofemoral nerve sympathetic fibers of the genital branch of the genitofemoral nerve so this is about the nerve supply of the scrotum now let's look into the lymphatic drainage the lymph vessels of the scrotum drain into the superficial inguinal lymph nodes the lymphatics they drain into the superficial superficial inguinal lymph nodes so the lymphatic scrotum they drain into the superficial inguinal lymph nodes now let's look at the development of the scrotum and also its clinical significance coming to the development of the scrotum so what do we have in the development the scrotum develops from the labioscrotal swellings we have the labioscrotal swellings so the scrotum develops from the labioscrotal swellings and the urogenital folds urogenital folds they bo both of them will fuse in the midline to form the scrotum and the site of fusion of those urogenital folds is marked by the midline fibrous ridge or rafe which i have just discussed and the, these labiosacral uh, labioscrotal folds in the female will form the in the female they form the labia majora labia majora and then the urogenital folds will remain separate and they form the labia minora labia minora labia scrotal uh, swellings will form the labia majora in the female and the urogenital folds will form the labia minora coming to the clinical significance clinical significance we will discuss it first so what do you have in the clinical significance first one you are discussing in the scrotal edema scrotal edema the scrotum is a common site of edema due to laxity of the skin and its dependent position so it is more prone to the scrotal edema and then we have the sebaceous cysts sebaceous cysts the skin of the scrotum is common site of the sebaceous cysts which is because it is due to the presence of large number of hair due to increased hair and the sebaceous glands it is more prone to the sebaceous cysts finally we have the scrotal elephantiasis scrotal elephantiasis so it is a clinical condition character by characterized by massive swelling and enlargement of the scrotum which is due to the accumulation of interstitial fluid in the scrotal wall and it is mainly due to the attack of the worms of filariasis which is known as the ukerearia bancrofti so this is about the clinical significance 
थैंक यू गैस इफ यू वॉच द वीडियो टिल द एंड प्लीज मेक श्योर टू हिट द लाइक बटन एंड सब्सक्राइब एंड शेयर इट यूर अदर फ्रेंड्स टू लर्न मोर अबाउट द एनाटमी एंड आल्सो वॉच अवर एनाटमी प्ले प्ले लिस्ट विच आर डिस्क्राइब विच आर इन द डिस्क्रिप्शन बॉक्स थैंक यू सो मच